Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 7, Part 3. Welcome to Part 3. In this part, we will look at some examples that make use of simulated annealing. Particularly, we will look at the Traveling Salesman program. We will also look at how to use simulated annealing to train a neural network. We begin with the Traveling Salesman example. The simulated annealing app is about to start. It will train very quickly. As you can see, it has already found a solution after 398 epochs. Simulated annealing finds a solution to the traveling salesman problem much faster than genetic algorithms do. Here you see the optimal solution, or at least a potentially optimal solution for travel between the cities. We will now look at how the simulated annealing algorithm can be applied to both the traveling salesman, as you saw here, and the neural network training application like we've done before. We will see how to train it with a simple XOR neural network and more complex neural networks later. Now we see how the randomized function is implemented for the traveling salesman. First we get the length of the city itinerary list. This is how many cities we're going to visit and we're going to loop from over these cities by a number of times equal to the current temperature. As the temperature increases, we'll loop over this more times and the effect on the cities list will be greater. Next, we grab two indices, index 1 and 2, which are going to be random locations inside of the city list. Using these two indexes, we will loop over the entire list and perform randomizations. If the distance between the two random cities has a value that is greater than zero, then we're going to excite those two cities. That is, we are going to calculate a double that is based on the distance between these two cities. Through the various additions and subtractions, we create a somewhat random number basically based on the distance between the two cities. This number is going to be used to determine which subsequent cities from these we should sort. Again, according to the simulated annealing algorithm, we are simply exciting the cities much like molecules are excited when heat is applied to them. This will allow the cities to excite less as the temperature decreases and move themselves ideally into a more optimal solution. In optimal solutions that don't increase the overall effectiveness of the solution will be discarded. If index 1 and index 2 fell so that they are not in numeric order, then we do a simple swap. We move 1 into a temporary value, copy index 2 into index 1, and restore the temporary value to index 2. This effectively swaps the two values. The values need to be swapped because we are going to loop between the two index values and excite all of the cities along the way. Because of this, the two values have to occur in numeric order. Here you see the stretch of cities excited in much the same way that molecules are excited when heat is applied. We are going to loop between the two index values and we're going to basically swap the cities all along the way. This excites this random range of cities that was determined based on a formula between the distance and the current temperature levels. This will create a somewhat random swapping of the cities. We also do not need to worry about loops appearing in the traveling salesman program. Loops would occur if the traveling salesman would visit the same city more than once. We assume that the itinerary was initialized with no duplicate cities. Since we're merely swapping values around, there's no way that what we're doing is going to introduce a loop into the cities. We had to worry about loops in genetic algorithms so that we did not duplicate cities. This is not needed in simulated annealing. And now we're going to apply simulated annealing to neural network training. We're going to see how we can use a training set just like we did before and apply simulated annealing to train the neural network. Training a neural network with simulated annealing will sometimes get past local minima that were encountered by backpropagation. 
Later we will see how we can use simulated annealing to help back propagation to get past flat spots that it's encountered in its training where it doesn't seem to be training optimal anymore. As previously stated, every subclass of the simulated annealing class must implement a randomized function. This randomized function is what is used to excite the virtual molecules of each solution as the temperature proceeds from the high temperature to the low temperature over a certain number of cycles. The randomized function that you see here is the randomized function that is used for training a neural network. Just as with the traveling salesman problem, we are dealing with an array of numbers. However, with the traveling salesman problem, this was an array of city values. For the neural network, this is an array of double values. These are the values that came from the weight and threshold matrix of the neural network. You can see that an array, which is called array, is created that contains a linear array of the weight matrix. We use the matrix codec function, which is just a very simple function that is used to the network to array is used to convert a network to an array of numbers that make up the weight matrix and thresholds. The matrix codex class also provides an array to network, which does the opposite of this. It takes the array that was produced and converts it into a linear length of numbers. This is also used for genetic algorithms as well. Here we loop across this array and we decide how much we want to add to each element of the array. By adding values to this, which can also be a, a, it's a random number generated based on the temperature, we are exciting the various values in the neural network weight and threshold matrices according to the temperature. So as the temperature decreases, these excitements are going to be less and less. This works in a very similar fashion to the traveling salesman problem, and it allows temperature-based excitement and randomizations of the matrix. This concludes class seven. It is at this point in the course that we have the midterm exam. The midterm exam will be due by class eight. In class eight, we will review my solution for the midterm exam program. We hope you will continue with class session eight. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.